Wu Qingning, The Journey to the West. The novel was first published in 1592, but is a cumulative retelling of a story that circulated orally and was adapted through centuries. Wu Qingying had a reputation for being a versatile poet and for writing on mythical and supernatural subjects in a satirical style. He was a native of the region of southeast China, whose dialect appears in the novel. Wu served as a minor official during the Ming Dynasty. The image is a scene from the journey to the West. With the Ming Dynasty, the civil service examinations regained importance as a venue for a political career and thus created a national culture of shared elite education, leading to a renewal of classical literature. An emergent urban bourgeoisie, increasingly literate and influential, provided an eager market for literature in the vernacular, the stories of which were rooted in oral performances that had already existed during the previous dynasties but now gained more complexity. The image is late Ming Dynasty, about the 17th century, ink on paper illustration of Du Shi Wang, one of the Yama kings of the ten courts of the underworld. The concept of layers and courts of hell appears to have arisen from a blending of ideas from Taoism, Buddhism, and Chinese folk religion. In the image, Du Shi Wang appears as a divine record keeper with a scroll and writing implements laid out before him. The journey narrative is one of the most popular and frequently used narratives in all of literature, extending back to some of the earliest known literature, such as the Epic of Gilgamesh and the Odyssey. The journey to the West, like other popular journey narratives, is both a great adventure story and a story of spiritual growth of its protagonists, as they attain enlightenment through their journeys and struggles and become immortals by the end of the story. The physical journey allegorically represents the spiritual journey of the protagonist. The physical journey of the story takes the characters from Chang'an in the Tang capital to their destination of Vulture Peak in India. The characters travel along the path of the Silk Road from China to India. But once they leave China, the geography becomes almost entirely fantastical and fictional. The image you see is a wood block of the journey to the West. The story had a historical basis in the journey of the monk Huangzan, or Chupitaka from 596 to 664, who traveled from China to India in search of Buddhist scriptures during the reign of the Emperor Taizong, one of the most splendid emperors of the Tang Dynasty. At the time, travel to the Western territories was forbidden, and Chupitaka could have faced arrest and execution. He returned 17 years later under imperial patronage and spent the last 20 years of his life in the Tang capital of Chang'an, translating sutras and the Buddhist text from Sanskrit into Chinese, and writing a record of his experience during his travels. The image you see here is a depiction of Kuangzan on his journey to India in the style of Kasuga Motumitsu, early 11th century. The most important addition to Kuangzan's journey is his acquisition of a wondrous disciple named Sun Wukong, monkey aware of vacuity. Monkey understands the world with a comic detachment that is in some ways akin to Buddhist detachment, and this makes him always more resourceful and wiser than Tripitaka. Yet, in his fierce energy and sheer joy in the use of his mind, Monkey falls short of the Buddhist ideal of true tranquility, while remaining a hero for unenlightened mortals. The image is a polychrome woodblock print of Sun Wukong by Yashima Gakute. The religious background of the journey to the West represents Chinese Buddhism, which blends Buddhism with Taoism and Chinese mythology and folk tradition. As an example of this blending, in the journey to the West, Buddha and his order of bodhisattvas and other spiritual beings coexist with the Taoist pantheon of gods. The journey to the West demonstrates the mixed heritage of Chinese Buddhism because Kuangzan and his cohorts must travel to India, the birthplace of Buddhism, to recover the sacred texts and return them to China, where people have veered away from belief into hedonism and sin. In addition, all of Kuangzan's disciples must make the journey to atone for their own sins of hubris greed, and carelessness. Throughout their journey, the pilgrims encounter various fantastical creatures from Chinese mythology, but in this telling, they are tools of the Buddha used to test the pilgrims. The excerpt on your screen represents a long treatise presented on pages 515 to 517 of the text, in which the concepts of yin and yang and practices leading to enlightenment, including four forms of patience, endurance under shame, hatred, physical hardship, and being in pursuit of faith. Are outlined. Tripitaka represents the Buddhist ideal of detachment, as he is able to remain detached and emotionless at the story's end, and that is why he is rewarded with Buddhahood. 
Tripitaka remains emotionless and shows no fondness or attachment to his disciples at the end. Despite their attachment to him, he fully embodies the Buddhist ideal of separating one's self from all earthly attachments and demonstrates how hard it is to attain this ideal. The image on your screen is a statue of seated Wanyin Bodhisattva by an anonymous sculptor. Thank you for watching my video. Bye.